Hi, and welcome back to the Save It For Parts channel. If you're like me, you may have accumulated a collection of used, secondhand, worn out, and otherwise beat up drones. And after you've flown a drone around for a few minutes and crashed into some trees and had a bald eagle eat one, what else do you do with the things? That's right, the subject of today's video is can we take an old drone and slap a thermal camera on it? Now normally an infrared thermal drone costs thousands of dollars and is really only available to military, police, and industrial users, but I want to see if I can do it at home for minimal cost. This video is sponsored by Hick Micro, who initially asked me to review their Mini 2 cell phone thermal camera, and I said that sounds okay, but send me one of these too, and we're going to do something interesting with that. So uh, I'm going to spend a couple minutes looking at these two thermal cameras, and then we're going to see which one, if either, we can stick on a drone and fly around. So first up, we have the Mini 2. This is a USB thermal camera that plugs into your smartphone. These are generally a little more affordable than a self-contained thermal camera because all the hard work is being done by your phone. So this comes in a pretty nice box. We even get a free sticker with it, that's cool. Very nice little carrying case, even has a clip here so you can stick it on a bag or a belt loop. You've got an extension cable in case you want to use this separate from your phone. That's really thoughtful. I have not seen a thermal camera include that before. We also have this little extender, which I think is also pretty thoughtful because if you're like me and you drop your cell phone on a daily basis, you probably have one of these protective cases and a lot of USB gadgets won't fit into the USB port without a little extension like this. So Hick Micro has really thought ahead with making this a flexible unit. Again, beautiful little carrying case. We've got our Mini 2 smartphone adapter. Feels really well made. Feels like a nice solid construction. We'll go ahead and get that app pulled up. All right, we've got some auto calibration happening. And yeah, we're up and running basically immediately. So I'm looking at my camcorder here, and yeah, there's my hand. The quality on this looks pretty good. That calibration thing pops up pretty frequently. I haven't seen that with other thermal cameras. I know they all do that. They all make a little clicking noise as they calibrate, but this one actually pops up a message on the screen. Mildly annoying, but not the worst thing. So, as with most thermal cameras, we can choose things like our color palette if we want to try to bring out... Um, yeah, that calibration popped up again. If we want to bring out different features in the environment, we can also see a charging power brick over here and a battery pack. So that's really interesting to see just how warm those power bricks can get. So if we get tired of that auto calibration message constantly popping up, we can actually turn it off over here. We can also manually calibrate with this button. We can also do a picture-in-picture, -picture, so we use the cell phone's built-in camera, and then we've got an album right in the app that shows us our captured images. Now this extension cable option is not just a gimmick, this is super useful. If I want to get into an enclosed tight space, like behind my computer monitor here, and look for hot and cold areas, like maybe I smell a burning smell, and I want to know is there a wire overheating back here. We can stick this under the furniture, we can stick it behind appliances, we can put it up in the ceiling, into holes in the wall. This is really handy. What really impresses me is the thoughtfulness and the design that went into this. Not only do you get that extension cable, you get that adapter included, but it's got this great little case. I like this case. The Hick Micro case here is less than half the size of my previous favorite thermal camera for the phone. I'm gonna say, I think I'm gonna switch over to the Hick Micro because this fits in my pocket more easily. I can clip it onto a belt, I can clip it onto a bag, I can bring this out cave exploring, I can bring this to a job site, and yeah, this thing is fantastic. So let's take a look at the other Hick Micro camera they sent. This is the one that I specially requested because of this Wi-Fi feature. I wanted a camera that would live stream images over Wi-Fi. So just like the Mini, this comes with some nice extras. We've got another sticker, we've got our charger, our manual. Again, very nice case. And just like the other one, this starts working right off the bat. Very easy to use, very straightforward. And this is a touch screen, so we can go into the menu, we can change our color palettes. And just like a regular camera, we've got the shutter button up here so we can take pictures. It's also super simple to do video. We just hold down the shutter button. We don't even have to go into another mode. Now you can release the shutter button. It'll keep recording until you push the button again and it stops and saves that video. We've got our album along with the date here, so we've got all the pictures and video that we took. I actually just realized a cool feature of the Hick Micro album that I didn't know about before. Let's say you've got a saved picture like this, and you want to see this in the different color palettes, but you were using 
a specific palette when you took the picture. You can actually go in and edit and you can change the color palette on a saved image. So if you like the rainbow mode better, you can switch to that. If you like the uh, black and white or the red mode better, you can switch over to those. You can just choose which one you think looks best for your given application. You can also do measurement right in the image. So you could say, what's the temperature of the cat's forehead here? You can also change the emissivity settings, environmental temperature, units, distance. Now I did all that with images from the Android camera. You can also do it with the handheld pocket camera. Another thing you can do with the pocket camera, so when it takes a picture, it doesn't just take the thermal image or whatever setting you have it on currently, it actually takes a thermal and a visual image. So later on, if you want to overlay those somehow, or do picture in picture, um, or just look at the visual image for comparison, you can do that. Well, I have to say, so far, everything on the Hick Micro Pocket Thermal Camera works great. Super intuitive, don't need any instructions, don't need any manual. You just pick it up and you start taking pictures. You start getting uh, visible and infrared imagery. and this is fantastic. You could give this to an employee to send them out on the job site. They wouldn't need any training with this. Now, I said I wanted to try out the Wi-Fi feature. That is something that I have not found with any other thermal camera. And I've tried a few thermal cameras. The ones that claim they have Wi-Fi, yeah, sometimes they'll just transfer images from the album with Wi-Fi, but not send you a live view. And what I really want is this live view sent over to my phone. I think I'm going to want the hotspot mode. So. We're going to turn that on, and we've got a QR code, so we want to download this Hick Micro Viewer, and then we can join the hotspot with that. So here's the camera, and here is what it's seeing over the Wi-Fi connection. That's pretty cool, and pretty lag-free. Like, there's a tiny bit of lag, but it's not very noticeable. I was hoping to use this big boy drone that Garden Fork sent me. Uh, thank you again to the Garden Fork YouTube channel. This is an older drone, and it's heavy. And the U.S. has recently passed some laws about drones heavier than 250 grams. So something like this now needs a registration, it needs a uh, IFF transponder, it needs all kinds of extra stuff that it didn't have. I need to get a license, I need to get registration, I need to sign up and take a safety class. At the Minnesota level there's another registration fee. Yeah, this is going to be a lot harder than I thought and we might not be able to do that in this video because I don't know how long that whole process takes. So the smallest drone I could find with the cheapest, lowest capacity battery is 200 grams. And unfortunately, the entire Hick Micro camera here is also 200 grams, or about 220. So sadly, I don't think we can fly this on a drone that I own legally. The smallest smartphone in the house is still 78 grams. So with the Hick Micro Mini 2, the whole package is just under 100 grams. Still too much to fly on a drone. I am actually looking for a new 5G capable tiny smartphone like this. If anybody out there knows of one, uh, please let me know in the comments. So if I can't legally attach the thermal camera to a drone, what are some other ways I could at least simulate or pretend to get the thing airborne? Maybe I could tie it to some balloons, although I think I'm gonna need a few more than this. Here it is, ladies and gentlemen, the Save It For Parts DIY Cheap Thermal Drone. And don't worry, FCC, this is just a stunt drone. This one doesn't even work, and it doesn't have a battery in it. Zoom, zoom, I'm a drone flying around. I'm definitely not just attached to these strings in the trees. Oh yeah, look at that drone. Look how real and not attached to strings that is. All right, so my drone simulator rig is working pretty well, and the Hick Micro Thermal Camera is working fantastic. I can get a signal way across the yard, hundreds of feet away, and no problems at all getting the Wi-Fi signal from it. I am having a couple problems with my testing here. It is really hot outside. It is like 98 degrees and I'm 98 degrees. So it's really hard for the camera to see me walking around outside if the entire environment is the same temperature as a human. The other problem is it is so hot that my phone has died. So it has overheated, I'm overheated. Um, it shut down to protect itself. And I think I'm gonna run in the house in the air conditioning to protect myself. But I am pretty happy with uh, how the Hick Micro Thermal Camera works. All right, I got up far too early in the morning, so I could try this again while it's cool enough out to actually get a good thermal contrast. So I still want to use this big drone. I want to show that the drone can actually carry the thermal camera, that the RF noise from the motors isn't going to affect the Wi-Fi, isn't going to affect the camera the way it did with my GoPro when I tried this years ago. And I think we found a loophole where we can actually make this work. 
Now, from what I can tell, flying one of these drones indoors is perfectly legal because that is not considered FAA controlled airspace. Uh, you just need a big enough indoor space where you can fly one of these. And I happen to have a nice big indoor space. So this is the geodesic radome that we got from Canada last year. We've got it all set up. It's about 18 feet in diameter, 16 feet high. It's pretty much completely empty on the inside right now. As an added bonus, because this radar dome is designed to have a radar dish or an antenna in here, it's transparent to radio waves. So GPS signals should be able to get in just fine and our drone hopefully will have no trouble maintaining attitude and position. And yes, the audio in there sounds wacky because it's a sphere, it's reflecting all the audio towards the center. All right, well that time the drone blew the camera over and then almost crashed into a box of parts. Let's try that again. All right, well this is working great. I took the main camera off the drone and just zip tied the uh, Hick Micro on there. And I've got the app running on my phone, on the drone controller, so instead of a regular old visible drone camera, now we have thermal drone camera. And yeah, this is fantastic. It works great flying around in here. I have not crashed it yet. The hornets or wasps up there are getting pretty angry at me, but nobody's stung me yet, so I'll count that as a win. Okay, how about range on this thing? I'm walking away from the dome and we still have a good Wi-Fi connection. We're still getting data from that thermal camera. So we're about 100 feet away from the dome right now and we're still getting our Wi-Fi signal just fine. So now we're about 200 feet away and we did lose the connections. If the drone was up in the air with that camera, I think the range would actually be a lot farther. The sun's getting higher and higher. It's getting hot out here and the dome is starting to be a greenhouse. So I'm less and less able to discern my own body temperature from the surrounding uh, ambient temperature in there. So I think we're gonna call it a day. But I am very happy with how the uh, Hick Micro and old drone combo went here. This is a fantastic thermal drone. It costs way, way less than a real thermal drone. A real one is like five grand. This thing I think is like 500 or so, depending on how you find a drone, if you find an old drone like this. And this is um, able to lift the Hick Micro just fine, no issues. I did take the onboard camera off, but I can still navigate just fine with the thermal camera on here. I have not had any issues with the video dropping out or having weird artifacts the way I did uh, back when I taped a GoPro to a drone years ago. So yeah, the motors are kind of noisy on these drones. They put out a lot of interference and they can mess with the cameras. Cheaper drones, you even notice that right on the built-in camera on the drone. But on this guy, no issues with the video feed, no issues with taking video, with taking photos. I'm pretty happy with it. Again, I don't know how well this would actually work in real life with the drone hundreds of feet away from you in the air. I suspect it would be just fine because I seem to be able to get a signal from this from 150 to 200 feet away on level ground with the drone and the camera on the ground. So up in the air, I think it'd be a lot better. But again, I'm gonna have to wait till my paperwork goes through so I can actually do that legitimately outdoors and not get in trouble for it. Now, it wouldn't be a real Sandland trip without a visit to our underground tunnel system, so let's see what the thermal cameras make of that. So here's a side-by-side -side comparison underground between the Mini 2 USB cell phone camera on the right and the Pocket all-in-one camera on the left. Pretty similar. Um, there's a little bit of brightness difference with the phone. I could adjust the brightness on there, but the frame rate is about the same. The quality is about the same. And uh, I would say both of these cameras are great underground. I literally just realized that the pocket thermal camera records audio as well. So this is what the visual light mode looks like. We're out here at the monorail at Sandland. If you'd like to learn more about the Geodesic Dome Project, the tunnels here at Sandland, or 
any of the other things that we get up to out here, I will throw some links in the description down below, and you can check out some videos on those things. Again, big, big thanks to Hick Micro for sponsoring this video and for sending me not one, but two thermal cameras to try out. I really appreciated it, and I genuinely like these products. I've looked at a bunch of thermal cameras, and so far, these Hick Micro units are some of the best. The Mini 2 is definitely one of the best USB-C thermal cameras for a cell phone that I've looked at. And the Pocket 2, I think so far, is the best all-in-one handheld camera that I've seen, especially with that Wi-Fi mode. That is above and beyond what any other manufacturer that I've seen has been able to offer, and that is a huge benefit for certain uses of this camera system. If you'd like to buy one of these cameras or any of Hick Micro's other products, I will throw links in the description down below, and you can go check that out for yourself. And finally, thank you to everyone for watching, and we'll see you next time.